So, this is a breakdown of Monomyth. It's a little bit delayed, but uh, I figured I'd give you guys the, uh, the breakdown and also some of the insight into the writing process. You guys are pretty nosy about that sometimes. So, um, let's just get into it, right? It's probably the most technically driven song of the album. Uh, and that's probably because it started out as like a, a drum thing. Um, I had all these drum riffs basically written, um, drum concepts put together. And uh, it was funny enough, it was the first song we released, but it was the last song that we wrote. So all the other ones we had kind of had written um, before, and we're like, all right, we need like one more song, what are we gonna do? And, um, I was like, yo, you know what we don't have yet? And Toast is like, what? And I'm like, like a crazy metric modulation fucking nuts rhythmic tune. And he's like, you got something? And I'm like, yo, I got a, I got a few things in the pouch. You know, so like I, I basically bounced down like some MIDI drums uh, that I had like kind of sketched out basically um, from rhythmic concepts. And, and here's what it basically is. It's basically what you're hearing is, you know, so that's basically you're hearing two entities, right? One, two, one, two, three. This is how the layman would count it. Um, so you have a two there, two perceived entities, three perceived entities, three, two, two. Let's make that more clear and three. Okay, now if these are like ones and zeros, you'll notice there's a pattern. There's one and then two of the same number, two of the same number, and one. And if you know your rudiments, drummers, you'll know this is basically right, left, left, right, right, left. An inverted paradiddle diddle. All right, so one thing that I kind of got into was arranging patterns um, instead of just going, you know, you have a two and a three and constantly going back and forth between them, you can arrange them interestingly, you know, so you can like make a paradiddle out of them, basically. Um, and that's going to sound, it's going to obviously give you different um, variations and, and make it sound, yeah, more like a arranged phrase. That's basically the outline, but... If we really get down to it, this is not a group of two. This is really, let's erase this. This is really a group of two and then three. So one, two, one, two, three, one, two, one, two, one, two, three. And this is two, two, three, two, two, three, two, three, two, Three, two, two, three, which is ultimately like a five, a seven, a seven, a five, a five, and a seven. Still outlining the right, if a right was a five and a left was a seven. Right, left, left, right, right, left. All right, so that's the first part. Uh, and essentially, um, we get into another part of the song and you know it goes dig 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 da dig 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 da da dig 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 da da dig 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 da dig 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 da dig 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 da da okay that's actually a 5 a 7 a 7 5 5 and a 7 um so it's the same underlying pattern uh it's just slightly different instead of dilla dilla or dilla 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 you have dig 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 da for the 5 and a dig 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 da da for the 7 so another way to kind of look at this is like, or that I was looking at this when I was coming out with these um, riffs is like, you know, it w I was looking at double bass stuff and I'm like having an, uh, an interesting time going like, you know, and I was like, man, it would be way more efficient if I just switched, you know, back and forth. So I started coming up with all these different patterns, um, basically exercises to try to uh, improve this. And um, then eventually like, you know, I was coming up, I was trying to 
think of concepts of like you know cool rhythmic motifs instead of just like you know numbers um so the idea is yeah improve the ability to switch back and forth so i could ultimately play it faster economize it so you know each one of these ended up getting three notes and i would switch back and forth so this would actually with the feet it would be uh, maybe i'll just put it up here right left right and then left right left all right otherwise it's nearly freaking impossible to play if you don't alternate back and forth bro oof it's gonna be harsh i could say okay i'm gonna always alternate between going right left right and left right left well if you did that to the end then what you would get is left right left right left right left right left Ooh, ending on a right that means Next time around, I would have to start on the left. Okay, so that, that means I'm learning this whole phrase now with the left foot lead. I personally don't think that's very smart. Uh, there's, there's like, you know, having both sides balanced and then there's like just making more work for yourself. So at this point, I'm like, fuck that. <laughs> I'm going to make this easier on myself because it's hard enough. Let's be honest. It's hard enough. So you got to kind of know when the, the self-mutilation and deprecation or masochism uh, ends. Here's where it ends. Every one of these, uh, I start with a right. So basically every one of these... Uh, groups will be starting with a right. And then on top of this, uh, this is not heard as, you know, in, in the beginning I do play it like I do play it like that, but I'm just messing with y'all, okay? That wasn't, that wasn't part of the original plan, you know? I was just like, and what would be a cool way to kind of uh, dupe people in the feeling like it's like almost like some new metal phrase or something. Um, uh, and the guys liked that and they're like, fuck yeah. I'm like, all right, then it's, then we're gonna do that now. Uh, this is ultimately not how you're gonna hear it, my brothers, because these, these twos and threes are heard and felt in triplets, okay? So like, just one of these, you know, if you were to take it out of context, that, 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 if you were to just loop this one, okay, what you have is a two, three clave. One, two, one, two, three, one, two, one, two, three, that, that's, that, that, that's, that, that's, that, 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 which is an African pattern originates in Africa and then it was brought over to uh, Cuba and they basically instead of hearing it feeling it as triplets they took that what is ultimately a clave and they said instead of that that's that 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 we're gonna go so uh, each one of these is kind of like equivalent to in triplets um, four beats. Do 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 do. So um, I was kind of playing around with that, and I was like, "Well, what if it wasn't in four? You know, it wasn't triplets in four. What if it was triplets in six? And then I was like, "Oh, I'd have to do like three of these." And that's when I started playing with different arrangements of basically this two three and somehow I stumbled across you know switching here and then going back to the original um, and I I think that's when I realized oh this is basically this rudiment um, I'm pretty sure that's how it happened it might have been like that uh, I was asking myself okay I've got you know um, 
I've got three twos here, which is ultimately a five. You know, three fives and three sevens, how can I arrange them? And then I started searching through uh, what rudiment has three of each. Um, and it could have been a paradiddle diddle too, but that the phrase would have been twice as long. Um, turned out to be less interesting, I think. So, anyways, uh, let's see how this kind of looks over triplets. So I realize in writing this out, it looks a little messy. Uh, <laughs> but ultimately, it's this complex pattern underneath a very simple pulse, which is... One, two, three, four, five, six, one, two, three. And under that you have So you have a snare landing here. The snare would actually be where that little little rest is. But ultimately what we're looking at here is, you know, you have the two, right? So this is one eighth note triplet. That's the two. We have one, two, three. One, two, one, two. And then this is a quarter note which counts as three eighth note triplets. And then we have one, two, one, two, one, two. And then there's the three, one, two, quarter note triplet again, uh, counts as three, two, uh, there's one, and this would be two, three, one, two, one, two, and then landing again on a quarter note. Now, the next part that happens is, is pretty nuts. Because basically, um, we were writing it, and the the guys were like, "Well, yo, what?" I'm like, "Well, we're not really doing any crazy metric modulation shit yet." And they're like, "Well, what would you do to make it some nutty metric modulation?" I'm like, "I don't know, bro. Maybe replace the twos with threes and the threes with fives, you know, something like." That. And started like working it out on a pad. And um, uh, yeah, we kind of ended up doing that. So basically, how these accents are felt over this quarter note pulse in triplets is retained. So that is retained, but we're s instead squeezing three notes in the span of two, five notes in the span of three, and you know this part of the song, it kind of uh, goes into like hyperspace or something. So when you do that, if you add up all these numbers, basically you have, you know, an eight and an 11 there. So eight, 11, 11, eight, eight, 11, which comes to 57. Uh, and at that point, um, we use the pulse, the rate of these, and um, of this phrase and treat them as if they were 16th notes. So it's an interesting way to modulate for sure. Uh, and we didn't decide to do it in 57 because like that would be one extra 16th note basically. Like you're playing it like it's in seven, like a big seven or like, you know, 14. And then adding a 16th note, and I was like, you know, there's enough freakiness in this song. Maybe we'd be better off just doing it in 56, guys. And um, they, they kind of they kind of agreed with me. Once it switches to 16th notes um, and comes away from feeling it in these accents and triplets and forcing the threes and fives in those spaces, once it comes from that, which is kind of the snare roll with the kick, once that's done, it kind of breaks into this do-do-do-sk-da-do-do-do-sk-da-do-do-sk-da-do-do-sk-do-do-da. 
So just basically change this into a four. And then, you know, play it over. Don't don't that gun guns gun don't count uns 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 uh so basically treat that as if it were you know a bar of four a bar of four and then a bar of six and then um, to get to the next part I honestly forget what math I did um, but. It was something nutty with 56 and um, just kind of like feeling the triplets. Uh, yeah, I actually can't remember for the life of me, so, so, so don't ask, please. <laughs> All right, so for basically the last part of the song, what we're looking at here is a bunch of fours and a bunch of twos. Now, uh, the way that I was kind of coming up with this concept was that, um, you know, threes and fives and sevens feel really cool in, you know, 16th notes. Well, what if, you know, you took even numbers and put those in triplets instead of putting odds in what is ultimately an even division, which is either eighth notes or 16th notes or 32nd notes, what if we did the opposite? And thus, this. Uh, and also I was like, uh, yeah, let's do that in six. You know, I was kind of like uh, making this session and making all these, these patterns in this session. And so uh, let's go over it. Basically, the way that I'm viewing this, if you, if you hear like, the groove, it's, you know, don't, 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 Okay, so it's basically four measures of six. But if you just listen to what, you know, the guitar is doing and the kick is outlining, it sounds like da, 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 da. It sounds very rigid, okay? And this, if you just repeat it, da, 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 one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. That's basically what it sounds like, okay? So this is ultimately a seven, and these are ultimately fives, and this is ultimately a seven, and this is ultimately a seven and ultimately a five. And what do we have? We have the opposite. Instead of five, seven, seven, five, five, seven, we have seven, five, five, seven, seven, five. The only difference is that instead of twos and threes to make a five, we're basically using twice the amount. Okay, so four, four, two, four actually adds up to 14 but we're gonna basically simplify. Um, it kind of sounds like one, two, one, two, one, one, two, doots, doots, do, doots, 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 do, do. But anyways, then what happens from there, Matt? Okay, now for the end, we have uh, this madness and it's the 4424, four, four, which is essentially a 7. Uh, 424, four, which is essentially a 5. 424, four, which is a 5. 4424, four, four, which is 7. 4424, four, four, 7. 424, four, four, which is 5. We have 755775. Five, seven, seven, okay, I'll put that up here. Uh, and then. I mean, you can kind of see this is kind of dancing all around what is the downbeat. We'll mark that as an accent. And the backbeat. We'll mark that as an accent. And um, here's another downbeat. Another backbeat. Downbeat here. Backbeat. Um, and the downbeat would be here. And this backbeat would here. So you've got 
Don't, don't, do count, don't, 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 count, don't, 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 and then something that I've been playing with a lot is kind of like taking a pattern that's in triplets and forcing it into 16th notes. What would be the equivalent of that? And if you put on a loop like this, you put on this loop, you can actually kind of, you can interpret it as 16th notes. And there's kind of a method behind it, and the, the method is basically, okay, if it's on a downbeat, it's gonna still remain on a downbeat if you transfer it to 16th notes. But here, we have the second partial of a triplet, which ultimately, I will change to an E. Um, and then we have a third partial of the triplet. That's most likely going to get transferred to an A. Uh. And then this guy, of course, gets transferred to an E. So whenever it starts to go to, you know, from the triplets to 16th notes, it's a little bit more rigid. Don't, 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 don't. So yeah, pretty much every third partial is going to an uh, and pretty much every second partial is going to an E. Um, let me just make sure that's right. Don't, 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 Okay, so this is one exception. Because I had an uh here, and um, you would just say, oh, well, you just transfer this to an E. Well, I did that up here and it sounded good, but here I wanted it as an and, okay? I don't know if you guys do crosses for ands or whatever. Sometimes people do the actual and sign. But anyways, whenever you're transferring your triplets to 16th notes, you kind of got to feel out based upon the phrase what is going to sound better. Um, and sometimes it's going to be just the formula of every second partial goes on the E, every third partial goes on the uh. But every once in a while, you're going to want to have an and in there so it's not just E's and uh's and, and downbeats. Um, it's going to feel more natural that way. But honestly, I hope you guys like kind of see where I'm coming from concept wise here and you know try to apply some of this stuff to your own writing and to your own practice because um, ultimately you know the the practicing for me of working on these concepts has uh, found itself in a writing con context which I think is ultimately what we want as musicians um, and it's it's pretty cool shit in my opinion um, but yeah I'd like to do more of these videos. I want to do more than just Model Myth. I'd like to do all the, pretty much all the tunes off the new record, but kind of go into more of the um, the writing process. But yeah, this one was heavily um, started from pretty much all drum concepts. Um, but each each tune's kind of got its own little um, story behind it. So uh, yeah, uh, let me know. Drop in the comments below if you guys think I should. Um, if you want to see other songs, you think I should kind of break down the writing process. Um, I probably won't go as, as heavy into the, uh, the phrasing and everything because this one required a bit more uh, in-depth analysis. So um, let me know. Let me know what you guys think. Peace.